doing the doing there. And we have about um, or 16,400 plus miles of state highways. Um, we're the 12th largest uh, state highway system in the nation. And then just a, a little bit on the topography of Arkansas. Um, a lot of mountainous regions, rolling hills, and a nice flat delta region. Um, a lot of different uh, terrain as far as where we're building our roads, and a lot of different terrain to analyze um, when we're looking at our crash data. Um, so I want to do a few statistics uh, about our crash data before I go into the tools um, that we're using. Uh, so here's a chart showing the total number of crashes in the state and uh, you know, total roads versus just the state highway system for the past 10 years. Um, you guys can see about 60% of all crashes uh, in Arkansas occur on our state highway system. 70% um, of all crashes in the state, total crashes, occur in our urban areas. Um, and then 70% of all crashes that happen uh, in the state that have a fatality involved occur in our rural areas and two-thirds of those um, are roadway departure related. Um, there were 550 crash fatalities in Arkansas last year. Um, this next chart kind of gives a comparison on how our fatality rate um, uh, versus the national fatality rate. And you guys can see we're just a little bit uh, above what the national fatal fatality rate is. Um, uh, all this being said, um, with our crash location tool, it's very important uh, for our new initiative toward zero death to make sure that we have uh, all the spatial information that we need in order to make our routes safer for our traveling public. Um, so I'm going to go over kind of past to present uh, the, the different kind of tools that we've used in the past to uh, locate our crashes. And then uh, I'll be introducing our new tool that we're going to use um, so we've been progressively implementing new methods uh, over the years, and so for the next few slides, I'm just going to show what we've done from the 1970s uh, through 2011 before the implementation of our new tool. Uh, so in the 1970s, the department uh, was tasked with locating and maintaining all the locations for crash events on the state highway system in Arkansas, and just on the state highway system. So for this purpose, the department decided to record each crash event with that event's county, route, section, and log mile location so they could be found and studied on the highway system uh, since the system uses the same county, route, section, and log mile setup. And we live by the log mile uh, here, here at the Arkansas Highway Department. Um, the department partnered with the state police and local uh, county and city law enforcement to make sure um, that they could uh, locate each crash uh, with its needed attributes, including an accurate log mile of where the crash event occurred. So we were relying on, um, on other law enforcement, law enforcement that weren't familiar, uh, very familiar anyway, with the, log, with the log mile system to get a log mile for us. So this slide shows one of the earliest tools that we would use, which is our county route and section map. It only shows the state highway system uh, on the map. Of course, it has the beginning and ending log mile uh, for each segment of highway, and it has a log mile for all the bridges on the map. So we were asking them to give us a <laughs> an accurate log mile for a crash location based on these maps. Uh, you guys can imagine uh, how difficult that was for them. Um, but there was a backup. And we also here at the department, we uh, had crash locator positions, and they had to locate, relocate, uh, all those crashes that happened on the state highway system. Uh, so, so next, uh, we also had our tabular road inventory information in these big books that they were able to flip through. And uh, for each route, wherever it intersected another state highway system, of course, there was a log mile listed. And then events that happened um, on the route, so uh, number of lane changes, um, ADT changes, there were log miles listed for that. As you guys can see uh, from the picture, very difficult to understand. Our crash locators here at the department uh, could hardly understand it, so it was very difficult uh, for us to think that other law enforcement were going to be able to understand it also. 
so once again, um, every crash had to be relocated here at the department, uh, even though we were getting a, a log mile from our, from our law enforcement. So uh, we also provided static uh, printed maps and uh, our, our workers here would write in the log mile uh, wherever uh, there, there, there was an intersection with another route. So we would take these maps, we would hang them up uh, with the city, uh, so they would have a, a static map on their wall to look at to uh, better locate a log mile, but, uh, you know, those maps can be out of date, uh, you know, as early as the next day. Uh, there's always uh, system changes on the highways, uh, so this was not a very efficient way uh, to get it done. So next we offered uh, <laughs> that we could make these maps. We didn't have to handwrite anymore. We could use microstation and we could put log miles in uh, of where uh, routes intersected the state highway system so they could have a, a better feel of, of what log miles were available for them to choose from to, for the crash locations. Uh, once again, maps could be out of date very quickly, um, and, and even though uh, these were available digitally, uh, most cities still relied on their printed versions that were hanging up on their wall. Um, so in 2004, um, we realized the power of our linear referencing system and how it could help our crash locators here at the department uh, locate uh, exact log miles of where crashes occurred digitally in our GIS software. So uh, we, we set up the program uh, with our CAD maps. We had our linear referencing system on top of those CAD maps so they could see intersecting routes with our state highway system. Uh, they could hover along using a tool called uh, LRS Precision Location. As they hovered along the, the state route, they could get an exact uh, route section and log mile of where their point was. Uh, very helpful for our crash locators here at the department, but we couldn't share this tool with law enforcement because they didn't have the software and uh, n not, not the knowledge either of, of the linear referencing system. So still we were, we were in a continuous cycle of us having to relocate all crashes that happened on the state highway system to make sure we were getting uh, an accurate log mile. And we were lucky. Um, our Arkansas Geographic Information Office had um, gotten with the counties and they had developed a, a 911 centerline routing system for the state. Uh, so thank goodness we had a, a whole state network uh, that was attributed with road names and such, so we could, we could utilize that with our linear referencing system and they would be able to see the routes, uh, their, their attributes, their names uh, to, to still better identify a crash location. But once again, that was a tool that we could only use here uh, at the department and other law enforcement uh, just couldn't, couldn't get to it. Uh, so we also tried during that time, uh, you know, GPS units. We bought 50 GPS units uh, sent them out with the, with the state police and uh, we wanted to do a trial period. Maybe they can use these GPS units, take a, uh, take a reading uh, at the crash scene, get a lat long for that crash, uh, get it into the system and then we would have a latitude longitude that we'd, then we could convert to log mile for our report. So we tried this for about three months. We gathered the data. Um, I've heard this from, from many other states. Uh, when, we, when we got the data back and, uh, and mapped it, a lot of those dots uh, landed in the state police parking lot uh, or they had moved to the side of the road, so in other parking lots where they were, uh, it just wasn't uh, convenient. It wasn't going to work. Not necessarily uh, the law enforcement fault. fault. Uh, they, you know, they didn't realize how important this was to us to make sure that we had these correct locations and uh, there was minimal training. And uh, we did give them those GPS units. Okay, so just a little bit about our linear referencing system, which was a major player in the tool that I'll be introducing in just a minute. Uh, so as I said before, over 16,000 miles of uh, state highways on our highway system, 12th largest in the nation. 
uh, and also included on our linear referencing system are over 15,000 miles of other routes eligible for federal aid. Uh, so what you're looking at here on the screen is pretty much our functional class system. So all routes eligible for federal aid is what we have currently on our linear referencing system. Uh, so our linear referencing system uh, sure works like most other DOTs. Uh, we assign the route with the county route section and beginning and ending log miles. Uh, the concatenation of the county route and section and the log mile information is its uh, unique value or its primary key field. And then we can map different things uh, from around the department that also have that same primary information, uh, such as job status, uh, information from our road inventory, and of course, crashes. So updating the LRS, um, 177 changes were made uh, just in 2012 on the state highway system. We have removed routes, added routes, relocated routes, and uh, often a lot of relogged routes throughout the year. Uh, we keep a live version of our linear referencing system uh, open to everybody here, but we also keep archived copies. We started archiving our linear referencing system uh, in, in the year 2000. Uh, so we can always go backwards to see what the system looked like um, back then, which is helpful. Um, we, we just received the 2011 statewide crash data. Uh, so we can't use a current linear referencing system to locate on. Uh, we're still locating crashes that happened in 2012. So we do have to keep these archived copies to make sure that we're locating uh, in, in the correct year that the events occurred. And so let's look at one of our typical crash reports uh, that we get here at the highway department that happened on the state system that we have to relocate. Um, of course, all the information here, you see a little narrative about where the crash happened and a little diagram. This particular crash says it happened on US Highway 82 uh, in Columbia County, section 3B, log mile 2.20. So we're going to relocate this crash and uh, see how the uh, law enforcement did out in the field. Okay, so from the narrative we see where the red circle is in the middle of the map, that this is approximately where that crash happened. But they said it happened at log mile 2.20, but uh, this route only goes to log mile 1.65, so couldn't have happened. So we're going to have to relocate this. Okay, so. After our locators got a hold of it, we relocated it um, to say now it happened on Highway 79, Section 1, at log mile 18.26. Those are going to be sent back to our state police. Those are going to be re-entered. The location is going to be re-entered uh, into the database for the correct crash location. Uh, so once again, that's a prime example of how difficult it is for our law enforcement to give us the correct log mile. So uh, back in 2011, February of 2011, uh, one of our county offices, Polk County uh, Sheriff's Office called. We just had a big snowstorm. We were still waiting for the snow to go away. And they said, hey, we need that map that we're supposed to use to locate crashes by log mile on the state system. Can you tell me where that is? So we directed him to the route and section map that they've used. And he said, hey, is there an easier way? And uh, that very day, we sat down and we came up with an easier way. And we don't blame them for asking. In this instance, here's a route that's about 19 miles long. Uh, there's no log miles in between for them to guess, so they have to use the little section lines uh, to, to kind of guess where that log mile could be. And they have 52 different fields of information per crash to enter in. A log miles not necessarily on their radar as the most important field. Uh, so, you know, a lot of human error, and then with our locators having to relocate all those crashes, sometimes we weren't getting those locations in in time to really do uh, some real time analysis with our data. So, making it easier. So, what we did is we took our linear referencing system. Uh, that included all routes eligible for federal aid around the state. And we asked our GIS platform, uh, GeoMedia, we asked, we asked GeoMedia to put a point every 100 feet 
along the linear referencing system. So when it did that, um, each point was populated with the county, the route, the section, and the exact log mile of that point. So then we said, okay, well, let's make this a little bit better. Let's attach some of our road inventory data to those points also. So now with county route and section and the exact log mile of that point, with other information that was going to be very useful to the uh, law enforcement to fill into their reports also. Well, then we took the points and we said, hey, let's shove these out to a KML file for display in Google Earth. Uh, so we did that through our program. And as you can see from the screen, uh, in the red, we have what's on the state system. In the blue dots, we have what other routes eligible for federal aid uh, or the rest of our functional class system. And you're able to click on those dots in Google Earth and see the exact information that was generated uh, in, in our GIS platform. Uh, of course, these are KML files. We can uh, email them out to anybody. Uh, you know, can email them out to family members they would be able to see. So we started emailing these out to our uh, state police uh, for them to be able to give us an accurate, a more accurate log mile of where their crash events occurred. Uh, and it's just worked out wonderfully. We also included our city limits. Um, as you guys can see in the, in the top left of your screen, um, there is a field they have to fill out to say whether or not it's in the city or out of the city. And if it's out of the city, they have to measure how far out of the city it's out of. So we have our, our city limits available to them. Um, instead of just being able to locate on main lane, they can now see the, uh, the log miles on frontage road and on ramps. And of course, they have Google Street View uh, available in here to be able to help them uh, better locate where they are in the field. And of course, this allows them, uh, if, if they have connection, uh, they can locate right there in their vehicle at the scene of the crash. Uh, if there's no time, uh, they can always come back to the office and of course use this tool also to locate the incident. Uh, in this case, this is, um, this is a pretty long bridge that we have here in the state, the 430 bridge. Uh, the beginning log mile of the bridge was 9.87. You guys can see in the graph on the corner of the screen. Uh, so we had a lot of accidents that happened at 9.87 uh, on that bridge. Uh, but as you guys can see, every 100 feet along that bridge, uh, that's just a lot of dots. It's almost two miles long. Uh, so they're able to give us a more accurate, better log mile uh, when they're out in the field. Not only are the, the law enforcement outside of the highway department using this, but also our crash locators uh, are, are taking advantage of this tool and now using it to, to locate those crashes. So how can everyone use this tool? Um, we can email out the KML uh, to everybody. We have an FTP site uh, that's open to the public. Anybody can download those KML files. We also have all these points um, or dots every 100 feet uh, available on Arkansas's GIS clearinghouse called GeoStore. In addition to that, um, our Arkansas Geographic Information Office offered us to uh, offer this data available on ArcGIS Online. Uh, so we have all of our dots in there. Uh, there's a, a link uh, that anyone can click on and go in there and see the same exact information that was offered in the KML files. And then also ArcGIS Online can be used in their smartphones also. Uh, so if they don't have um, their laptop open or, or a good connection, um, they can also use their smartphones to be able to see that information. So the use of the LRS location tool um, or our new crash location tool, the training and outreach to law enforcement agencies started in June of 2011, so just three months after, uh, after we came up with the methodology. Um, all of the state police uh, agencies are using this, which accounts for 25% of all crashes um, statewide, or about 40% of crashes on our highway system are being located uh, using this tool. And we constantly reach out to counties and cities 
Uh, right now it's just a volunteer basis uh, for local law enforcement to, to use it, but we have about 42 of those agencies uh, that, that have started to utilize it, and we've gotten very positive feedback. So once we have the data, um, our, our better locations uh, that we have, of course, uh, numerous planning studies are done uh, in order to figure out, hey, do we need a passing lane here? Do we need uh, more lanes here? Maybe a turning lane here uh, to, to make things safer. Maybe some rumble strips. And then we can also run all kinds of queries um, as far as types of crashes, um, be able to look uh, for, for areas of, uh, that might need to be paid attention to uh, for more safety initiatives to take place. As far as safety initiatives, having this data, having these locations uh, in a more exact location for us, we've been able to uh, prove that uh, different things such as cable median barriers need to be installed uh, in more areas around the state. Uh, rumble strips uh, need to be installed, especially on some of our two-lane rural highways uh, where run-off-the-road crashes uh, were, were very prevalent. And then we have one more tool that we started using. Uh, it's called Intergraph's, uh, it's Intergraph's Incident Analyst. Uh, it's been able to help us uh, identify um, clusters and locations, uh, areas that we really need to pay attention to uh, that we haven't been able to, to find as quickly without this software. So case in point, um, this is a study we did in Jacksonville, Arkansas. Uh, we had to, to make a map for our administration so they could see the uh, clusters of, of crashes that happened in Jacksonville. Um, the, the map on the left, uh, you guys can see all the, the clusters of crashes, the yellow dots there. This map uh, took about four hours uh, for us to put together. Uh, a lot of these crashes happened at the same exact log mile, so the dots are just right on top of each other uh, in, in our GIS platform. So we exported it out to our CAD, we took those dots, we moved them around so we could produce those clusters. Uh, so once again, about four hours. But with Incident Analyst's hotspot analysis tool, um, in our GIS platform, it took about two minutes uh, for it to generate this hotspot map for us. You guys can see that the two maps uh, compare very well uh, with, the, with the clusters. Uh, on the right-hand side, the hotspots in the red uh, are showing where those clusters are that you guys can see on the map on the left in the yellow. And then there's also an incident count tool. Uh, you can count uh, incidents within any boundary area. So in this case, we're using counties. Uh, but you can also do cities. We do a lot of uh, House and Senate districts if our legislators want to know uh, where most of the accidents are happening within their jurisdictions. And there's also a repeat incident tool that we use uh, to run. Uh, this is on a statewide basis, but we can run it um, you know, on, on any size project area in the state, but it lets us know quickly um, where repeat incidents happen over and over again at the same log mile location, uh, so we can really focus on those areas and, and do some study analysis uh, to, to find out if uh, there are some safety issues within those areas. And they do have a tool in there also called uh, Change Over Time. Uh, it kind of plays a little movie for you, um, what, you know, what happens. Uh, with, with these incidents. Um, I just did January through June for this. Um, it's in PowerPoint, but once again, imagine it's a movie. When I flipped to February, keep in mind that we had a pretty big snowstorm this year, so a lot of crashes happened that month. And there's also temporal reporting. Um, it makes nice charts for us to be able to show where uh, the majority of, when, excuse me, the majority of the crashes happen. So at the top you see um, month of the year, uh, in the middle of the day of the week, and then on the bottom time of day uh, crashes that happened. And this helps us put together nice figures, especially for public involvement. We use this at a public involvement meeting 
Um, we did hot spots of the crashes. Uh, on this particular study segment, we wanted the public to know that we know uh, that, that there are uh, a concentration of crashes uh, that happen in this area and it's under study and we have plans in place to, uh, to rectify that and also we had our temporal reporting on top of that figure. Okay, in the future, um, a methodology will be in place by June 2013 uh, to include all public roads in our linear referencing system. So uh, from our about 30,000 miles that we have available now in our linear referencing system, approximately 110,000 miles um, will, will be included in there. Uh, you can see from the figure uh, in, in the red, this is about how much we have to add, about 74,000 miles we're going to have to add for our linear referencing system. But when that's done, we guesstimate um, in approximately five years, we'll be able to locate all crashes in the state, not just on our federal aid system, um, which uh, the safety initiative, um, you know, there's, there's nothing like having more data uh, to do analysis with to find out what needs to happen. Of course, the dual carriageway system will be put in place along with that linear referencing system, so each divided highway will have two center lines, and road inventory will include complete data for log direction and anti-log direction. Right now, we can only uh, map on our linear referencing system based on one center line. Uh, but as you guys know, FHWA uh, has, has asked us to do dual carriageway along with an all-public roads linear referencing system. And in 2014, the, uh, the Highway Department along with the Arkansas State Police will start implementing eCrash, um, which was developed by the Center for Advanced Public Safety. Uh, or CAPS at the University of Alabama for a paperless electronic submission of crash reports. eCrash will have an actually map click tool uh, that our law enforcement will be able to use in their vehicles. They'll be able to click on the location. It will give a latitude and longitude of that crash, but they are going to be using our points, every 100 feet points, uh, within the map cl uh, click tool also uh, for log mile information. Okay, and uh, this is just to illustrate we're just skimming the surface uh, of what we can do and look at all the potential uh, that's ahead of us, especially when we get our all public roads linear referencing system in. Okay, and contact information um, right here for more information on uh, Intergraph Geo Media or Incident Analyst, um, James O. Brown from Intergraph, and then more information on eCrash. There's a link. Uh, on there for you to look at also. And then I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks, Sharon. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the lines for uh, question and answer. This conference is now in question and answer mode. To alert the speaker that you have a question, press 1, then 0. Each question will be asked in the order it was received. So you should have heard some instructions. If you've got a question on the phone line, just press 1 and then 0. You can also uh, uh, enter in questions into our chat pod, especially if you're listening through the computer. Let me just uh, quickly see if we've got questions on the phone. We don't have any questions on the phone right now, but um, let me see. So Sharon, um, you mentioned that uh, one of the issues that you had rolling out different, uh, the first couple of attempts at something like this, the training seemed to be play play a role, or trying to understand how the um, the uh, users, especially the state police, were going to try to enter in the information. Um, it sounds like that. Uh, yeah, what you have now, it was much easier, um, but are there still issues you're running into in terms of, uh, um, you know, no, getting that uh, location right. information? Uh, well, uh, uh, true, right now, uh, when, the, when they click on one of those dots uh, and see the information they have to enter in their report, they do still have to, to enter that in, um, you know, by looking at uh, what they see in, in the crash location tool in Google Earth and typing it in. So there's a lot of human error um, in there, but 
Um, aside from that, uh, we've been um, constantly checking uh, the locations that have come from, from this new crash location tool. And uh, the department's made a decision that as long as they use this tool, which there's a check mark they can check to say they use the tool, we mm -hmm. don't have to relocate those crashes anymore, uh, which means for us that we're getting our data, our crash data, uh, instead of a year and a half later, um, uh, we, we expect to see uh, our, our crash data eight months um, after the year ends instead of a year and a half later. And then, uh, you know, we hope in the future it's, it just comes on faster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know a lot of states are, are um, that's one of the issues is uh, trying to either um, make it easier for the, um, especially the state police, they're involved in entering a lot of this information, making it easier for them to somehow put that in. And that's why we're looking forward to eCrash uh, with, with the map click tool. It's, you know, it's a paperless system. Um, when they click, uh, a lot of our road inventory information and, of course, that log mile information will automatically be entered into the report through the eCrash system. Mm -hmm. Looks like we have a question a user that uses ArcMap, they want right, to know. So, yeah, um, um, I, we, we do have uh, ArcMap here at the Highway Department, uh, but uh, uh, GeoMedia is our GIS platform, so I hope uh, maybe that somebody else that's on the conference would be able to, to answer that question. I know that, that ArcMap has the capability for hotspotting, um, but I, I am not quite sure uh, exactly where that is. How did you learn about the incident analyst product? How did you find out about that? Um, um, they actually, uh, Intergraph actually was advertising it. Um, uh, a lot of a, a like a, a crime uh, location tool um, where incidents happen over and over again. Um, and then they worked with uh, Ohio Data, and uh, and they kind of uh, started advertising it as a hotspot tool for crash analysis. Uh, so when we saw the, the presentation, uh, we knew that uh, it could be a good tool uh, for us to be able to, to take advantage of uh, for hot spotting. Mm -hmm. Let me just quickly check on the phone lines to see if we've got any questions. Chief David. Oh, hello. Hello. You've got a question? Yeah. What, what's hello. your name? This is David Lawler with uh, TDOT. Okay. What's uh, your question? We, uh, I think that we had seen that tool that Anagraph started with maybe about a year, two years ago. Right. Looked, it looked good. They've come up with another tool that we built inside of our, what we call our trim system. And after that data is collected, it goes into a uh, repository at the Department of Safety. Then we extract the data and put it into what we call our trims uh, side over here in TDOT where we put all of our crash data. And that includes uh, location data by county route, log mile, and et cetera. Uh, and we, they came up with a automatic, it's an automatic updater inside of our trims. And it looks for all the electronic reports that's inside the Titan database at the Department of Safety. And it extracts those and pulls them over. Now, what do, if there's a tolerance problem or the, the, uh, the officer can't, do, can't get the right location out in the field, and we've got, the officer's got a map it to that was built by IDMS, uh, the vendor was, and it's uh, probably what about what you're using too. We've got a where the officer's sitting there, and he can p take a Google map and find the location. He can go up and uh, click on the spot where the wreck is, and then draw it back to where his car is sitting. And we we've, we've got a pretty good uh, accuracy rate with that. Now all the troopers have got them. And now the uh, it's starting to we uh, go out into the other agencies. Into the uh, local agencies. Yeah, yes, the counties and the cities. Uh, we are getting 
fairly good fairly good with the cities they're getting better all the time we're just about I think about 80 percent electronic now you remember Kim just close to 80, yeah about 80 percent electronic we still got some paper stuff that has to be handled in, handled in a different way but we're very uh, uh, we're happy with the tool. It looks good, and and we also have a co we have a contract with Intergraph too. Uh, so that door is always open, you know, there for them to to uh, come up with that too. We, uh, right now, depending on the uh, GPS stuff coming off the electronic reports out in the field, and it seems to be working pretty good. It's fast. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very pleased uh, with, uh, with Google. Uh, thank goodness it's free. Uh, or is it Amen. Google? <laughs> this tool might not exist, but uh, very happy with it. I, I see another uh, question up here, Mark. Uh, what accuracy level are you shooting for? Uh, plus or minus 50 feet with our crashes? Yes, that would be uh, wonderful. In fact, our accuracy level, just we did a point every 100, every 100 feet, um, our accuracy level uh, before this tool started um, with our law enforcement, um, we were <laughs> we were sometimes finding a, a, up to a, a half mile uh, it, it could be off, um, which uh, you know things change on the system very frequently. So that just was not going to do uh, uh, for us. So yes, plus or minus 50 feet um, is wonderful. But we're finding that. Um, we're, we're getting our, our crashes um, very nearly uh, where they exactly happened. Again, if you've got questions uh, um, on the computer, you can put them into our chat pod. I just want to make a quick plug, too. I think uh, back in 2011, um, Tennessee was actually one of the, a couple of states that uh, participated in a peer exchange that we did on GIS and, and, and highway safety. And we've got a uh, summary report on our, on our website. It's the website, if you look in the lower left corner of your screen, is gis.fhwa.dot.gov. And if you go to there and if you click on uh, resources and then click on reports, you'll scroll down. You should see a um, a uh, report, a link to a report that looks at what what uh, several states have done: uh, Massachusetts, Washington, Ohio, Maine, Tennessee, Illinois, and, and Minnesota. Sounds like it might be worthwhile to uh, kind of do a follow-up uh, case study report or peer exchange and see what where states are nowadays. And I think I'd definitely include uh, uh, what you're the work that you're doing, Sharon. Let me just. Check to see if we got any any other questions on the phone. Okay. Well, we don't have any other questions um, on the phone line right now. Let me. Um, I'm just going to click it back to your contact info, Sharon. Um, were there any? I don't know. Last. Last. Uh, you know. uh, I, well, I know that the, the PowerPoint is going to be available to um, to download from the participants. So uh, I, I just want to let everybody know I had a lot of graphics in here, but at the bottom uh, of each slide um, in the PowerPoint, I wrote down um, uh, very particular uh, notes uh, about what each slide is showing. Mm -hmm. um, if, if they'd like to download that. Yeah, and actually. That uh, go ahead. I, I'm just going to say we're we're available anytime to uh, to answer questions. Once again, I I don't think it matters what GIS platform you have. Uh, this tool was very it's a very easy methodology uh, to put together. But if anybody has any questions, uh, please feel free to contact us. Um, to to download the the file, uh, you should be you should be able to see a file download window. If you click on the file name and then click on Save to my, the Save to My Computer button. You should be able to download a copy of this pre presentation. Uh, it looks like every people have started uh, answering some of the, our poll questions, and um, this again, this helps us give some ideas of, of what kinds of uh, webcasts everyone would be interested in in um, participating in. Also, if you've got ideas for uh, a case study report or a peer exchange or or something, um, something that could be 
that we need to highlight in a better fashion, uh, just let me know. My email address is on the lower left corner. Uh, I want to thank Sharon Hawkins again uh, for agreeing to, to do this presentation. Uh, like she mentioned, uh, I guess, Sharon, you did this presentation back at, the, at G GIST. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, so there were several, a um, lot of good uh, presentations that were done there, and that's one of the things that we try to do, is, uh, especially for, for people who haven't, um, who weren't able to, to make it out to uh, this year's uh, symposium, which was in uh, Boise, Idaho. We, we try to get some of those presentations and, and uh, make them available as, as webcasts. Um, like was mentioned earlier, the, the presentation is going to be available to download. We'll, we're also recording this, so uh, we'll send a link out to a recording of this presentation. Um, let me see, one last check for questions on the phone. Okay, well, I think I think uh, we're all set then. Sharon's information is contact info, info is on the screen. Uh, thank you, Sharon, again, and uh, thank you for to everyone uh, for for calling in, logging in, and and participating. Uh, please feel free to to uh, fill in the questions, answer the questions as best you can, and I want to wish everyone a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Sharon.